today we're going to pick up a few supplies to build the dog gate I've been planning to build for the last year. I need a couple clamps. I'm not sure what I need, but I'm just going to grab two of what I think I need. And then I'm going to go to Home Depot and pick out the wood. I saw Andrea on DIY Wife do this, look down the wood to make sure it's straight. It's not, but I bought it anyway. Now that we're back home, I'm going to unload all the crooked wood from my car. I also picked up some wood filler and some hinges. I already have the nail gun and the nails and also a drill. So if you don't have that, you may need to get that for this project. All in all, I spent around, I think it was $50 or $52 buying the wood and the miscellaneous accessories to build it. This is the first gate that I built, sort of winging it on my own. The only thing that I actually measure when I'm building these gates is the width of the hallway. I already know how high I want it, which is 29 inches. And I'm just confirming that here that yes, I still want it to be 29 inches. And then I'm measuring the width of the doorway. I'm going to subtract an inch because I have a piece of wood I'm going to attach to the side there to make sure that it's secure. I'm not worried about my dogs jumping on it because they don't do that. I don't even need to put a lock on it because they don't push on it either. But I just want to make sure if there's any toddler in the house that hangs on it, it's not going to pull out of the drywall. So if you use this gate for a baby, for example, you might want to attach a piece of wood on the side like I am to make sure it's nice and secure in the wood and not just drilled into the drywall. Full disclosure, this is the very first time I have ever used a saw like this. So I'm a little hesitant the first time I'm making a cut and I'm super excited at how easy that was. If it's not already obvious, I am not an expert craftsman. When I bought the wood for the first gate that I made, I bought 2x2 two two boards. These are also 2x2 two two boards, but I knew this time the 2x2 two two boards are not actually 2x2. Two two. Apparently, that applies to all wood, so like a 2x4 two is not actually 2x4. Two this 2x2, two two, not 2x2. Two two. Keep that in mind when you're buying wood and you're measuring. Of course, the length of the wood obviously is going to be whatever it says it is, but the boards around are not actually two inches. I think they're one and three quarters or maybe even one and a half. I don't remember, but keep that in mind if you're measuring for something like that because it's not going to be like actual two by two. The only boards I actually measured are the ones for the frame because I want it to be the exact height and width to fit in the doorway. So I'm just double checking here. This is the width of the gate. I'm just making sure it'll swing freely and it's not too small or too big to fit in the space I want it to go. I'm now I bought these clamps because someone told me if I was doing this project myself, I was gonna need clamps to hold it together. I didn't know what kind of clamps I needed, so I bought two different kinds. I ended up not needing the other ones, but these actually were really helpful, although I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I clamped it together. I started to screw it, as you can see, and the board started moving. I tried to hold it, and then the clamp fell apart. So I'm going to try again, and I'm going to make the clamp a little bit tighter so that it actually stays together this time. I'm telling you guys, if I can do this, you can do this. <laughs> I'm a mess. 
When I built the first gate, I measured everything and my husband helped me put it together. So he did the holding and what we did on the first gate is we put two screws in place here to keep that board from turning like it did on me the first time. But I realized that I didn't really need to do that because it's not like a spindle where it's just straight up and down where it could potentially turn. It's going to be nailed into the frame and it's also going to be nailed into other boards. So I use screws but it was really unnecessary to do. If all you have are nails, that's perfectly fine for this project. Instead of measuring everything and cutting it at perfect angles, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the frame, the piece of wood I'm putting under it, I'm just marking using the frame as a guide, and then I'm just gonna cut where I marked it. And you'll see in just a second, once I've cut it and it fits in there, it's a perfect fit. This might not be the best way to make this gate. Maybe you want to be precise, maybe you want to cut exact angles, but this worked out perfectly for me. I did it not only once, but twice, and didn't have any issues either time. The frame is perfectly level, it's cut to the size and width I want, and honestly, I wasn't trying to make it perfect. As you can see the boards on the floor there, they're not even straight laying on the floor. So there was zero chance they were gonna be straight when I put them in this frame. So I figured the best way to do this was to just lay it out, mark where I wanted the cuts, and then make the cut, and it worked out great. The pattern of the gate that I'm making is a Chippendale gate. I had actually looked up how to make a Chippendale screen door, but I decided I would try to make one of these gates first to see if I could even make a screen door, which now I know, of course, I can. But I didn't actually go off of any plans. I didn't do anything other than make a drawing of what I wanted it to look like. To be honest, I don't even know if this is really a Chippendale pattern. I just saw it, liked it, and decided to make it. Now I don't know if you've noticed when I'm cutting these boards that there's like a little laser line as the saw turns on and that laser line shows you exactly where it's going to cut. I didn't pay attention to that until I'm like a couple of boards in and I wasn't cutting directly on the line which I guess I got lucky the first couple I cut. This one I didn't cut short enough so from here on out I'm making sure that the line that I mark I'm lining it up exactly with the little laser so that I cut it perfectly. Now, I know I said I didn't measure anything. What I'm measuring here is just the distance from one board to the other because I want them to be about four inches apart, give or take. They're not exact, it's not perfect. They're not four inches apart, but I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can and then I'm just marking the wood from the underneath where I wanna cut it and then I cut it and it fits in the little slot. Now I do have wood glue, but I didn't use it at this point. I didn't use the wood glue until I was ready to put in the wood filler. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't use the wood glue because I had it and it would have been actually really helpful to hold these boards in place while I'm trying to measure the other ones, but it worked out just fine. I didn't use it. It was just more of a hassle. 
I also could have been nailing them in place as I went because the boards not staying in place was actually part of the biggest problem when I'm trying to measure the next one. Hindsight is 2020, of course. If I build one again, I'll just tack a little nail in there to hold it and then add more nails once I'm finished. for you now You got two minutes of my time And I don't really break too easily But I'm worth it Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight Oh So give me, so give me your all I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind Just watch me break in I also kept mixing up the boards and forgetting which ones went where. So about halfway through, I started numbering them, which if I would have just nailed them in place, that now that I'm thinking about it would have solved my whole problem. I wouldn't have had the puzzle that I had when I was trying to put it together and they wouldn't have been falling apart each time I moved one. That would be one thing I do next time if I do build another gate. And you see here, this isn't even correct. Like, none of those boards are where they're supposed to be. <laughs> Just nail them in place. Don't do what I do. Just tack them in place as you go. Still not right. I can see right now. Still not right. I do eventually get it right. Don't worry. It was a process. We are a little over halfway there, so if you are still here, I very much appreciate you being here. If you just randomly found my channel and you're not a subscriber, take a second to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, you know this is not my usual content, so I do appreciate you hanging out, watching me build a dog gate that I have no idea how to build, but somehow it all works out, so hopefully if you have a project like this that you've been thinking about, maybe I give you some motivation to attempt it yourself, avoid some of the mistakes that I'm making, and build a better dog gate or baby gate. Whatever kind of gate you want, build a better one than me. But hit that subscribe before you go do it. Now that I have all the pieces cut, because I didn't put them together yesterday, my husband is going to help me nail them together, so I'm going to have him do some of the holding. I wanted to use the nail gun, but he was like, no, you're not using a nail gun. So here we are putting the pieces together. He's going to nail them for me. So what we're doing first is we're going to nail the inside pieces and then attach them to the frame. If you start nailing um, from the outside, you won't be able to get the ones nailed on the inside. So what we're doing is we're just taking these little pieces here, we're nailing those, just tacking two nails in there, and then we're going to attach those to the outside of the frame to secure it. Even though it was correct when he pulled it out and nailed it, when he put it back in the little frame, it wasn't correct. We went back and forth on this a few times before I fixed everything and it got nailed together. I didn't include all of that in this video because I don't even know how long it took us. Much longer than necessary. Technically, we're on day three now. The first day I spent cutting all the pieces. The second day, my husband just nailed them together and then I didn't do anything with it. So this is technically day three, but really only day two of me actually doing anything. At this point, I've already put the wood glue in to fill in and just kind of hold the boards securely in place. We tacked all of them with those little brad nails and what I'm doing here now is I'm just filling in all the cracks with wood filler. I'm not using a lot of wood filler because if you do use a lot, you have to sand more. 
I already know from the first gate that even though these boards aren't perfect, the paint is going to cover up a lot of the imperfections. And to be honest, I don't really care about the imperfections. I kind of like them. So less is more when you're using wood filler. And I'm just going to sand it all down and then we're going to paint it. Now I'm moving closer to you and it's getting dark in this room. Tell me what you want to do. I'm not sure if it's even necessary to prime and then paint this wood, but I had primer, just like a little spray primer from the first gate that I made. I also primed that, but again, I'm not sure that it's necessary since you're painting it on raw wood, you probably don't need to prime it first. I did buy this piece of wood at Home Depot when I bought the other one. I think it's four inches by one inch. It's four by one, I think, or three by one. I don't know, but it's just a little bit wider than the actual gate. This is the piece of wood that I'm gonna attach to the wall. So I'm gonna screw this into the wall to make sure this is secure, and then I'm gonna screw the gate into this because toddlers, you know, they hang on it, they push on it. I wanna make sure it's not gonna rip out of the drywall. Now, if you're one of my regular subscribers and you're here for the cleaning, this is for you. Conversation and you seem to agree with me. But when there's complications, you withdraw and leave me to be. When there's a problem, you become like a wall. And every time I trip, it's a free fall. Why don't you have? The first gate I painted, I used a satin finish paint because I didn't want it to be shiny, but I didn't have any more of that. So I looked around in my garage and I found some cabinet paint that we used for my two bathrooms when we did the remodeling. So this paint has been sitting in my garage for like six years. It is thick and blobby and it actually worked out perfect. It is a satin finish, it's smooth, it's super durable, and with all the imperfections in this wood, it covered them up beautifully. I'm using a hole punch here to mark where I want the screws to go in and it sort of holds them in place as I'm screwing them into the wall so I can do this by myself. Now this next part I absolutely do not recommend doing on your granite counter. I don't know why I did this. This was stupid. I did not drill into my counter. Let's be clear. I did not drill into my counter but it was stupid to do that. Like don't even do that. This is the board that I pre-cut to the exact height of the gate. So I'm using my level here so that I can at least get it somewhat straight when it's screwed into the wall. My thinking is if this is attached securely to the wall, I can securely attach the gate to this. And because it's wood and not drywall, it'll be more secure for, I don't know, people pushing it to open and close the gate or, you know, a toddler that might maybe try to hang on it. I've already made sure which direction the hinges are supposed to go and I marked on here where I'm going to drill them in. 
So now I'm just going to attach them to the gate first because like I said a minute ago, I'm doing this by myself because you know, I don't want to wait for anybody to come home and I don't want to ask for help. I want to say I did it by myself. So I marked where I wanted the hinges to go. I'm going to screw them in and then I'm going to attach the gate to the piece of wood that I screwed into the wall. Would it have been easier if I waited for my husband to help me hold this to screw it in? Yes, but I don't do things the easy way. I do them my way, which is the hard way, because I have no idea what I'm doing because I've never done this. So I'm just finding random objects around the house now to try and lift this up to be the right height to hold it while I screw it in. First, I tried one of my acrylic containers that I bought to reorganize my hall closet. That was too tall. Then I tried some batteries that I bought for the path lights out front. That was too short. So I go and I grab a couple books. I put them on top of the boxes of batteries. Grab a couple more books because it still wasn't right. After a few minor adjustments, I finally have the right number of books on top of the boxes of batteries. And now I can screw it in and make sure the gate is level. At this point, I'm basically a professional. Other than the fact I didn't measure anything or cut anything straight, and I forgot my drill when I'm ready to hang it, but I did hang it with a level, so my gate is level. It does fit in the space that I measured it to fit. I mean, what more could you ask for? There's no passion in the comatose Baby going down, down, down Baby going down, 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 down Tried so hard to stay afloat We keep moving like the river goes Baby going down, down, down Baby going down, 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 down And I thought it's time I'm letting you go This time I know it for sure Just thought I should let you know Thanks for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. I do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you next week.